Come on. Sit. Down. This is Willow, and this is Willow's Roadmap to Success. Willow is a uh, wheat and terrier mix. Now she does show me a couple signs, like that little movement right there was just me touching her side. Sometimes if a dog has um, an ailment of some sort, sometimes they'll kind of be real twitchy and particular about who touches them. Um, she's, uh, the guardians have noticed on her back rear end, so she might have some issues like that. So you might want to look into, I suggest a Cosequin. I use a Cosequin Double Strength, a DS. Down. Um, and so sometimes uh, she's about she's 11, so she might have arthritis kicking in. So I would try the Cosequin. Try it for about a month. Follow the dosage. It's a higher dosage at first for about a month, and then you, if you start noticing a difference, she's a little bit more playful. It looks like she's acting more like a puppy in terms of her movement. Then it's probably helping her. Um, I put my dog on when he was about six, and he's been on ever since. So it really made a huge difference. So, um, and if the dog has a, uh, a pain, any sort of chronic pain, that can uh, affect us psychologically as well. So if I have a pinched nerve for a while, I might be a crabby with people as well. So um, let me see, we started off by talking about uh, uh, increasing rec exercise. We're in one of the few places, some of my clients in Los Angeles, where I actually have a set of stairs in the house. So she's reactive to, uh, to joggers on walks, and the video above talks about how to use counter conditioning to fix that. But we can set her up for success. Before we do that exercise, we should exercise her. So a great way to exercise a dog if you have stairs in your house is what I call a doggy stairmaster. I touch her nose with a treat. With an empty stomach the first time, I throw it to the bottom of the stairs. The dog runs down the bottom of the stairs and licks it up. I come up with a funny word that means go down south. Maybe we call it Cancun. And then we call the dog back up, and then we, uh, maybe we say Vancouver. Uh, so a uh, northern city to go up and a uh, southern city to go down. Or uh, So basically what we do is the first time with an empty stomach, because the dog's stomach can actually move around if it's full of stuff. So you don't want them exercising until about an hour and a half after eating. So the first time we do it, we throw the treats up and down the stairs until, and the dog says, you know, Cancun and Vancouver, and we call each down up as one. And we do it as many times until the dog's like, until the dog's like that's 447 times, I'm, I'm, you're crazy, I'm not going down anymore. Now we know what the maximum number is. We would usually exercise the dog about 50% to 75% of that maximum number multiple times a day, or before guests come over, before we go for a walk, before anything that she's gonna maybe potentially misbehave, let's take that top level energy off. So if you get in a habit of maybe for the walk, maybe you don't do 75% of the maximum before, maybe you just do 10 up downs on the stairs. Give her at least 10 minutes to recover before the guests come over, before you go for the walk or whatever it is, and then you go for a walk, she'll be much more relaxed. Um, other things you can do are scent games. The guardians also play a little kind of fetch keep away from her, which also works well. Walks are great, but they're just not the most efficient way of exercising a dog. We just got done going for a walk and I showed the guardian how to use a martingale and add the special twist of the leash to give her more control of the dog. Now, if you forget how to do that, message me. If you need, remember the five rules for a structured walk. Um, you, and all these things I'm gonna go through where you can find on my website, but if you can't ever find them, message me, I can send you a link directly. But to find these videos, go to doggoneproblems.com, click on where it says dog training tips. Now, if you're looking at it on a desktop or a laptop, you'll see the search box on the right side of the page. If you're looking at a mobile device, the search box is gonna be the very bottom of the page, but there's the last thing is actually an email signup list, so the second box at the bottom of the page. So you would type in structured walk. I have done this video with hundreds of clients. One of the guards had to leave for a business trip, and so she can watch that other uh, video, and you guys can watch it yourself and refresh your memory. I also have videos for uh, what I call um, uh, uh, escalating consequences, those are the things to disagree, um, petting with a purpose, passive training, um, and some of the things I'm going to talk about here. Um, but basically, uh, if you get into habit, uh, if you go to the website, you can find those things. One of the videos that we were going to shoot that we ended up switching the, uh, to the counter conditioning exercise was teaching dogs to stop jumping. And the best one of the videos of those that I've shot is one called, uh, for a, uh, actually it looks similar to your dog, it's a golden doodle though, and it's a large golden doodle, her name is Honey. So I just type for honey jumping, and it'll show you how to do the technique that I went over at the door. Uh, uh, the other guardian can watch it, and if you have friends coming over, I would send them a link to it as well. We're gonna do this technique. So what it is is you stand just right outside the dog's reach, and you wait for the dog to calm itself down. We don't tell it to do anything. As soon as it's calm, we reach to engage. As soon as it's in, it's excited, we pull back. Now remember, excited is not necessarily happy. Come, that's passive training. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, most of us confuse excited for happiness when it comes to dogs. When we come home, the dog's excited when we pet the dog. Well, we're going to make it more excited. Matter of fact, anything a dog is doing when we pet it is what we're going to be rewarding. When I talk about how you can use that to your advantage, but most people train their dogs to misbehave with that behavior. The dog come, we come home, the dog's excited, it jumps up and we pet the dog. Well, the dog's like, oh, jumping up on the human is the best way to say hello. 
Well, the problem with that is when a dog comes, when a person comes in a room and a dog jumps up on them, that's their way of claiming ownership of that person. It's a leadership mindset. So this structure in that in the honey jumping video will prevent her from being able to reach the person and rewards her from being calm. And nothing else happens. After a while, she'll just start calming herself down more and more. Now, one thing I forgot to go over on the structured walk, a little tip, and I'll just go through it here. I usually start out my walks. Once you get out of your courtyard is when I would start this. Get 10 treats. Take up to five steps and then stop short and tell her to sit. When she sits, make sure you're treating her next to you, not in front of her. Um, and so as soon as she sits, pop the treat in her mouth and say sit. Then take up to five more steps. So sometimes you might take two, they might take one, they might say five, three. She never knows how many steps. By the time you get to your 10th one of these, the dog's like looking up at you and paying attention. And when you stop to sit, not necessarily the 10 steps, but eventually your dog, you'll stop and your dog will sit down automatically. Well, then your neighbors are like, oh my God, your dog used to lunge and bark and jump up like crazy. Now she sits when you're talking to me. How'd you do that? And you're like, of course, we hired Dog Mom Problems. He showed us how to teach our dog to do that. But we're conditioning our dog. And that's why a lot of the things I went over in the session is teaching the dog to sit before it gets a permission. So we sit before we go through a door. That's one of the rules we'll talk about in a second. But we do that for the doors, and then we go to the street, stop, and we take up a couple steps, stop, sit, treat, stop, sit, treat. Do that for 10 treats, and then like maybe once or twice every block, stop short, and then give her the treat. And so uh, for if, as long as she sits. After a while, you'll stop, and like I said, she'll just give you an auto sit. Um, now, uh, we also went over, uh, and there's also uh, calm leashing is another thing you might want to search for. Many people leash their dog up when it's overexcited. And the energy level your dog has in the walk, in the house is going to be the energy they're carrying with them outside of the house on the walk. And so if we don't achieve the calmness inside, there's no way they're going to listen outside. And when dogs are overexcited, that's when they're more likely to make mistakes. So helping your dog learn to be calm and relaxed and balanced by practicing a leashing technique in a, in a calm way is a great way to set your dog up for success for having great walks. Now remember, exercising before a walk can be a great way to do that as well. <laughs> Sit. So somebody was coming by on the street and that's her little thing is she works as a guard dog. She likes to sit at the window. So one of the things I suggest the guardians do is what we call maintenance. We wanted to remove temptation. If your dog barks at the window and it seems to make, every time she sees somebody and then the person disappears and goes out of their sight, the dog thinks, I made that person move away. And that validates the behavior. So we have two really good windows in a beautiful part of town here in LA. Um, and the guardians really enjoy the sunlight, I'm sure of that. So we don't want to close our blinds and she'd probably just tear the blinds down and go around them anyways. So a lot of times we do something called maintenance, we call it uh, Roman blinds, where you go to uh, Kinko's or uh, Office Max, get a three feet sheet of white paper, cut it exactly and put the paper on the outside so she can't tear it down. And then basically you do it, I would do it probably to the middle of your pan there or where that rod iron is on this window. Okay. Unless you can jump up and see higher than that, you might have to go a little bit higher than that. But the idea is every time she goes to the window now, she can't see through it. It's a filter, it allows sunlight through. As humans, we can see over it because it doesn't cover the whole window, but it stops her from going over there and getting rewarded for barking at people and making her think that she's the guard dog. The guardians also have kind of a mat there in front of the window. Um, she's kind of laying on the mat. I would suggest you replace that with some plants or something else or something to block her from getting there as long as she's not knocking it down. I would also get a dog bed and I would probably put the dog bed right where, right where we're sitting. Now the play, best place I find to get dog beds is Groupon, they're the cheapest. I like to get a dog bed that looks like a couch cushion. It's foam inside, it doesn't have any crevices. A lot of people get one that looks like kind of like a simulated couch. The dogs don't actually lean against walls like I'm doing right here, they sit upright. So I like one that's just square, maybe has a little bit of a C on one end of it, just so uh, you know if I throw treats on it, it'll stay there. And I have videos on my website on how to condition or train your dog to go to the dog bed on command. But you put it here, and you put, uh, put some treats here the way I described in the video or, or when I explained to you guys in, in person, the dog will start gravitating here and come up with a funny word that needs to go here, like Manhattan or whatever the word is. Um, now, one of the rules, some of the rules we went over to flip the leader following dynamic are really, really important. A lot of people will disregard them, but for, and please go ahead. Um, for dogs, um, lack of rules can, can, makes the dog think that we are peers, and if the dog sees you as a peer, then listening to you is optional. Also, if the dog comes up and nudges and demands attention and you listen to it, the dog's like, we're not peers, I'm up here and they're down here. I have more rank or authority. I'm even less likely to listen to my humans. So what we wanna do instead is we wanna flip the leader file dynamic by enforcing rules consistently so the dog sees us acting like a leader. And remember, enforcing the rule is not make you mean and breaking the rule is not an appropriate reward. It confuses the dogs. So the first rule I usually suggest is no furniture. Now remember, we can always go down to their level and hang out and cuddle with them. They just can't come up to our level for at least 66 days for these rules, and that's the minimum 
or as long as the problem's still going on. Now, I would recommend getting X mats, the letter X M A T S, and putting those on the couch anytime you're in the room and you're not sitting on the couch. That way, this is what I was looking for earlier. Um, that way, if the dog um, it gets up, you know, oh, I'm going to go sit there. Well, I can't because there's the X man is keeping my spot. Willow, this is what I was looking for earlier. So yeah, why don't we come over here and chew it so everybody can see how pretty you are while I talk? All right, we'll get that one. All right, Willow. Sit or lay down. There we go. All right, so now we can have Willow on the shop for the rest of this. All right, some of the other rules that we went over are uh, you have to sit at the door. I would actually have her sit before she goes to any doorway. But at first, inside, we go to the door and we say sit one time. If she sits within three seconds, and I open the door. If she doesn't sit within three seconds, I walk away and I sit down somewhere and I wait one minute. Then I go back to the door and I command her again, sit one time. If she doesn't sit this time, I walk away for two minutes. Next time I'll walk away for four minutes, then for eight minutes. I keep double the length of time until eventually when I go to the door and say sit, she sits down and that, then I open the door, that's the reward. Um, and I would do that with the doorway to, out of your courtyard, um, coming back inside, and doors in the house. If you're in Starbucks going, anytime you go through a door, she has to sit first. And you say sit, if she doesn't sit, just stand there and wait if you can. If you're selling at Starbucks, maybe move out of the door. But if you can, uh, if you're out and about, I would just stand there. Inside, I would walk away and sit down. And if you're standing somewhere outside and you're waiting for her to sit, like the courtyard door, and you say sit once and she doesn't sit, just stand there and wait. Don't move, don't say the command word over and over again. As soon as she sits, swing that door open. Don't cut her, that becomes a reward. As soon as I sit, it causes the door to open. Well, after enough uh, repetition, she'll be like, oh, this causes the door, uh, the door to move open, so I'll just sit in front of every door to get it to open. Also, if you're talking with the neighbors, always give her somebody to tell her to sit. Um, all right, so other rules, uh, she shouldn't be allowed to be in the kitchen when we're preparing food around any human who's eating food. The humans need to stop giving her people food because that confuses the dog, especially from the table. If you want to give her people food, some chicken fat or whatever, you can cut it off and leave it off. Uh, don't cook it, don't spice it. Put it in a bowl later so it doesn't smell like your food and it doesn't appear to be coming from your table. Um, I would also make that uh, the sitting on the, uh, laying on the bed is only with an invitation. So the guardians get up, they get in bed, they get on the covers, they do whatever they want to do, whenever they're ready, then they invite her up afterwards. This way, she's sharing their bed as opposed to their sharing her bed. It's kind of the way she sees it. All right, um, um, I'm giving her a bully stick here or something I forgot to ask the guardians about. I only saw two toys in the living room. And a lot of people just clean up before I get there. Um, but dogs need to chew on things, and especially when they're stressed, it's how they channel their frustration. So I always like dogs to have a couple of Nyla bones, Nyla bones, N-Y-L-A-B-O-N-E-S, um, and they usually come in the cartoon bone that actually no bone looks like, but you can get all sorts of different shapes and sizes. I have one that's like a round with a bunch of ridges on it. I have one that looks like a Tyrannosaurus. I have one that looks like a forearm. People think it's a sex toy. Um, just get all these different varieties. They also come in flavors. So chicken, barbecue, bacon. So try to get a couple of those. And if your dog doesn't like it, try to give your friend one, one to eat, chew on it for a couple of days and then bring it back. A lot of times other dogs have used it. It's more desirable. I would also get antlers, real antlers. They're expensive, but they're hard and the dog will chew on them. Um, I would get also a, uh, a real bone or two. I usually suggest getting marrow bones. Marrow bones should be one inch marrow bones. You can get any length, but I like the one inch ones because they can get the marrow out. Now when you get the marrow out, you, it'll be frozen. Keep them frozen until you give it to her. And once she walks away from it, go look at it. There's marrow left in the middle, poke it out and let her eat it. It's very rich and you will not want it around your house. Um, but once she's eaten all of it, she's, it should be very appealing, uh, very interested in that. Um, once she's done that, then you can clean it and then she has bones that she can chew on. I also like to give my dog a water buffalo horn, which will probably outlast the dog. I make sure it's solid, it's not hollow, um, but it, it'll smell funky for about a week or two and after a week or two the smell kind of goes around, goes away. Now, um, I don't know if there's anywhere we could do it, but I guess we could do it with the, uh, the, 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 the railing on the stairs. Um, she also like jumps up on guests and gets really excited. Well, we're gonna help her calm down by the, the honey jumping exercise that I mentioned at the door and also helping her practice the leash. Remember to search for a calm leash and practice leashing her up for five times for every one time you take her out so she no longer gets excited for the leash. But one of the things I'll do is I'll take a leash, I'll run around like the leg uh, of the last rung of your uh, railing there for your steps and get a six foot leash. Maybe use the uh, pink one that you're using there. Run it through the handle you put your hand through. So you run around and run through the handle. So you have, the, it basically comes a tether that's attached to the base. So your dog has now six foot of freedom. They can't make it all the way to your guest. Sometimes what we want our dog to do is practice being around someone and block the old behavior. 
Oh, she likes to jump up and bark and voice, be boisterous. Well, if we have the guest sit on the couch and she's on a six foot tether, but she, the couch is seven feet away, she can't make it to them. So she'll try and she'll protest a little bit. She chews on and get a chain leash. So she won't be able to chew her way out. Otherwise she'll chew her way to freedom. And eventually make sure there's a dog bed or carpet over there. And when she sits and lies down, the person can do the same thing, engage with her a little bit. And she gets excited, they just pull back. So we're saying same thing with the honey video. When you're calm and relaxed, you're very attractive to me, I wanna pet you. As soon as you get excited, I pull away. And, I'm, and we're using the leash to prevent her from getting to the human. And this way, after a while, she'll start hanging out and be calmer and faster and faster. But again, don't tell her to sit, don't tell her no, don't bad dog. Just the only correction is I withdraw my attention. And then I give it when she's doing things I want. All right, um, let me see. Uh, so those are examples of rules. Uh, well, last thing I didn't go over uh, well, uh, so far, but is eating is the most important activity for dogs. Right now, the guardians free feed her, which I think is a contributing factor. So what we want to do is we put the food down the bowl. She's not allowed to eat it. Then I eat something in five more bites. Chip, crap, cracker, carrot, something crunchy preferably. Then I invite her over. Honey, for uh, Willow. And I invite her once or twice. Once she looks at you and knows what's going on, if she chooses not to come over, after one minute, pick up the bowl, dump it empty, and put the empty bowl back down. 99% of the time, they'll come and lick the empty bowl. Well, what's up? Well, when you walk away, the food goes away. Because that's the way it would be in the wild for her. And there's no food left over in the refrigerator, and there's no Burger King. So then you're, uh, so you're eating something in five more bites first, then you're giving her permission to eat. If she turns her nose up and the food is gone until the next meal. Now if she goes longer than three days, call me. But usually if the dog goes longer than three days, it means somebody in the house is cheating and giving the dog some food. And don't, because the hunger becomes your ally. And eventually, if you have dominion on food, you're eating first and you're controlling the food situation, that really elevates you as an authority figure. That's something you're doing for your dog every day anyways. And it's also not healthy for them to have to kind of graze um, for a lot of reasons I won't get into here, but it's just, it's healthier for dogs to eat and what you give them when they give them. And if you're on a road trip or something, you need her to eat, or you need her to eat with food, with, uh, uh, with medicine. Most dogs, you put food down, even if you just got done feeding them, they'll go and eat some more food. And that's what we would like to get to. Now, um, I also talked about passive training and petting on purpose. Passive training, let's talk about feeding. Every time she takes her first bite of food, call it tacos, or fajitas, or sushi, or meatball, or whatever the word is you want, name your favorite restaurant. So every time she, for three months she takes her first bite of food, she hears the word piccata. And then piccata becomes her command word to eat. Every time she drink, takes a drink water, say cocktails or wine or drink or beverage or whatever you want to say, agua. So now you can tell her to drink. So if you're on a hike and you need her to drink, you can tell her not to do it. Even though most dogs will drink on their own, it's nice to have that vocabulary. And passive training is the easiest way to train a dog to do anything. Every time the dog comes to you, pet it and say come. Every time it sits, pet it and say sit. Every time it lays down, pet it and say crash or down or whatever your word is. Every time it goes potty, wait for it to start pooping and say Putin or whatever your word is for to go to the bathroom. One word for both commands. And then as soon as the dog gets done, pop the treat in its mouth and say the word Putin again. And the guardian kind of gave me a eh, potty. Uh, when we're out potty, a lot of times we just take for granted and it goes wherever it wants. Well, if it's your commercial bundle up on the couch, it's a cold day, you want to go outside and you think the dog might have to potty, but you don't know. If you say potty and the dog just kind of looks at you like this, that's a no. They potty and there goes, then you know it's a yes. So just having a more, uh, better communication makes just for a richer living environment. So passive training is waiting for the dog to vol voluntarily offer you a behavior organically. And you just simply recognize and reward it in that three second window. Now, uh, uh, remember, uh, before I get to the petting with a purpose, remember anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're specifically amplifying. So if your dog jumps up on you, immediately stop petting it, cross your arms. If it stays, stand up and just stand there and be bored of boring until the dog gets down. As soon as it gets down, then tell it to sit or lay down or do something else and then pet it for doing that activity. So this way you're saying, when you jump up on me, because of the way of claiming me, it makes, makes me ignore you. Now when you come home from work, ignore her if she's excited. Wait for her to calm down. When she's calm, start reaching. If she gets excited, pull your arm back. It's kind of a theme in this video if you're, if you're noticing. Disengaging when the dog does the thing we don't want with good timing is half of how dogs learn. It's the half that most humans throw away. So if you get in the habit of stopping with precision, she'll learn to stop offering those particular behaviors. Um, so um, the, the other thing that's excited that coin is anything your dog is doing when you pet is what you're amplifying, including unbalanced states of mind. If you pet an excited dog, you'll make it more excited. A fearful dog, more fearful. A territorial or possessive or protective dog, more so. So you can lay your hand on the dog and let it know I'm here with you without amplifying, but as soon as you start petting it, you're gonna reinforce the exact thing you're trying to stop your dog from doing. Also be careful about saying watch words. I see a lot of people, 
Good, be a good girl, be a good girl, be a good girl. Every time the dog's nervous and you think it's gonna lunge at someone, then be a good girl means think about lunging at someone or lunging at someone. So I use that the flip side of that for passive training. Every time you're watching TV or your dog's just chilling out, pet her and say Buddha. So every time she hears Buddha, she's completely blissed out at least 99% of the time. Then 1% of the time when she's excited, you say Buddha, she goes, oh, relax, okay. Doesn't mean she's necessarily always gonna do it. If she's too worked up, again, always increase the distance between her and whatever she's worked up about. But if she, uh, she is, uh, if you can say Buddha, she's not so intense, now she understands what you mean. Um, so uh, uh, don't pet her when she, she's excited or nervous and be careful not saying the same adjective over or watch words because you'll create a command word to get excited or to bite the guest or whatever the case may be. Now petting with a purpose is uh, if the dog comes up and tells me what to do and I pet it, then I'm rewarding the dog and, or reinforcing, yes, you're the boss of me. So next time the dog comes up and nudges you, tell the dog, give the dog counter word, tell it to sit. When it sits, pet it on its shin and say the word sit. Um, if it doesn't sit, then don't pet it. And it's gonna be hard for one of the guardians, uh, harder than the other ones. But by, by playing a little hard to get, we're gonna cause that dog to wanna to be more interested, more needy to come for us, rather than if I go constantly chase the dog around, the dog's like, oh, I've got David wrapped around my finger, I can do anything I want. So withholding your, your attention is a very powerful way of motivating your dog. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell the dog sit. When it sits, I'm gonna pet it and say sit. And I can pet it as much or as little after that as I want. You just have to one pet to as many as you want, one to infinity. So um, that way the dog is being rewarded for desired actions and behaviors. After a while, and what will happen, the dog will start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for attention. When it does, make sure you pet it and try to pet it on its chin whenever possible. Say sit, not good sit, remember don't say extra words, just say one word, the command word. And don't say sit, sit. Say it always the same way. Yes, I know, I saw you look. Um, so that was gonna be passive training, come, but she stopped halfway through and then I offered the treat and that kind of polluted a little bit, but I still said the word, remember time, anytime you give a treat, if they should hear the command word after the treat goes in their mouth. Sit, or down. So the treat goes in the mouth and then they hear the command word immediately after the treat goes in the mouth. And that makes them look at the command word a little bit more favorably. I'd also like the guardians, um, well, uh, I'd like the guardians come up with a list of the official command words and say vocabulary if we're using a different version. If the word is come and I say, come here, somebody says vocabulary, I say, thank you, come. So it just makes it easier for the dog. And whenever possible, come up with funny command words. I'd like the guardians actually get in a habit of trying to train their dogs to new tricks or commands. Um, it's a great way to help the dog respect you as an authority figure. It's a lot of fun and it gives you different ways to redirect your dog's attention by making it do a tornado or rollover or play dead or whatever it is. So what I'd like you to do is go to YouTube. Uh, all these dog trainers will show you how to do their trick on, on YouTube. So this week, maybe you teach her how to uh, bang your dead. Next week, the, uh, the other guardian teaches how to roll over. Next week, you take over again. Now you teach how to balance a treat on the nose. Next week, we're gonna teach you how to dance or sit pretty or whatever these things are. So if you get in a habit of each one of you teaches their four new tricks and commands and you alternate, and once she knows it, if it's roll over, you wanna go outside, roll over. You wanna eat your food, roll over. You wanna pet the ball, roll over. You wanna pet you, roll over. At the end of the week, you look at the dog, it's just rolling over. And again, come up with a fun word for that. I call it stunt dog for my dog, my dog flops and rolls over. So if you uh, all week long practice that one command, then the next week we teach a new one and practice it all week long. By the end of eight weeks, your dog should know at least eight new commands and dogs that reach a tipping point of at least 10 commands reach typically a different confidence level that makes them able to kind of brush off a lot of things. I'm not gonna say it's gonna solve your problems, but it will help the dog respect you as a little bit more as an authority figure and it'll also help give you more ways to distract her. Going back to petting with a purpose, um, remember the dog will start prepaying for attention, make sure we do recognize and reward that. And I use the watchword of paycheck if I suspect the dog is petting without a purpose or the person is. So if somebody comes in the room and I'm petting her like this, they might say paycheck, I would stop and pet her and say down, down. Actually, I asked her to, to lay down before you came in the room and when you came through the door, she stood up and I continued petting her and David said it's allowed. And I'm David and I do say it is allowed. But it's just, we won't realize how often we pet without a purpose. So if somebody says paycheck and she was standing, I would say stop petting her and then give her that command again. Uh, now I also use the watchword of uh, testify, but you can use any word you want for passive training. So if she just walked up to me and somebody says pass, uh, testify to me, I look at her, down, because she's laying down. I'm just gonna narrate whatever she's doing. She's standing there, I'm assuming she came and just put her and say, come. So you can do this for anything. Any toy that she has, name all your original toys. Now all balls can be balls, that's different. But if she has a little zebra, maybe you call it stripey. 
And she has a little elephant, you call it Trump. I do not have Trump fetish. Uh, but it's one of those things where just putting things in classification makes it easier for the dog to understand what we want. Um, when you call it under the bed, call it bed or comma or whatever the word is you want to use. So now you can say comma, and she goes, oh, that's Spanish for bed. I'm going to jump up there. Um, so those are uh, great, uh, uh, pending with the purpose of passive training, if you get in a habit of those two things, every time you pet your dog, it becomes a micro dog training session that boosts the dog's self-esteem, increases the respect for you, and helps you practice a behavior that it needs to do anyways. It truly becomes a gift. Um, all right, I'm trying to think, is there anything else we want to go over? Um, I have one last question. Okay. Um, while we're eating, mm -hmm. what should I do with her? So when you're eating, she shouldn't be within seven feet of you. If you eat there, do you eat in here? No, wait, sometimes we eat in here. Okay, so you want to, uh, we have a carpet that's been rolled up for the session, but if we roll it, uh, unroll it, and we're eating, then I would say the dog's not allowed on the carpet if we're eating on the couch. Okay. And so if she, if she gets on the carpet, remember to use those escalating consequences. Hiss, yes, stand up, march at her, and until she turns sideways or gets off the off of it. That's another video that I can show you guys. I can show you how to do. So you can either search for kitchen or invisible or invisible line. I show people how to create an invisible line. And what you might want to do is, when, like I talked about, I don't know if I did this on camera, off camera. Go through your phone, call people to come over and help you practice the door exercise or any of these exercises. Hey, Julie, we haven't talked to you forever. You know, we have this dog psychologist come by. He suggested that he showed us a cool way to get on his dog to stop jumping on people, but we need guinea pigs. And we haven't seen you forever. I got a nice bottle of Merlot. Why don't you get some good cheese and come on over? We'll hang out like girls. We haven't done it in a while. Then you have your friend come over. Your friend's coming over with the intent of helping you with your dog. And I'd like the guardians to practice that door exercise because that's one of the big ones for them. I'd like them to practice that at least once a day. But multiple times, the more you practice, the faster the dog's going to get it. And so after a while, you get to the point where your dog just going to go sit five feet away from the door and wait for people to pet him. And then you're like, wow, well, you're doing a really good job. Of but if you only do it once and then you wait five days and do it again, it's going to be rustier and harder for the dog to make progress. More is better, but at least once a day for that. Um, and then find that place to do the practicing with the counter conditioning uh, with the, uh, the joggers and try to find a couple different places. Don't just do it at one place. And if you're doing it this direction one time, try to do it the other direction if you can. Uh, the idea is to have a bunch of different varieties. Dogs don't generalize well, so if they do something in the same place, they'll be able to not lunge at a jogger in this one park, in this one corner, but other places I won't be able to do it. So when you're out and about and you see people jogging, just take note, oh, that'd be a good place to practice, and make a note and come back and practice there later on. Um, your place would be great to practice because this has actually happened. You got people that are jogging by. So maybe if it's, uh, uh, you know, people usually jog in the morning, so maybe in the morning you get up early and one of you is sitting outside in the street, maybe uh, get a little sun, the other one's just right inside the doorway, and as you see, as you see a, dog, a jogger, you kind of tap your nose and go like five, five paces away or whatever it is, and then you could be right in your courtyard, and the great thing about it, you guys have a screen fence, so you could actually do it with having her off, uh, I mean, you probably wouldn't want to have her off leash, but you theoretically could because she can't get to the jogger. But remember, she has to be re uh, non-reactive. So find places to practice that, practice that, and try to get momentum going with that as well. Try to do that at least two or three times a week. Uh, and then I would also check with your vet about uh, a shot for uh, an antihistamine or uh, try her children Benadryl or something like that. She's just going pretty, pretty good on her paws, and that can be a contributing factor as well. So if we can take that out of the equation, that might help. So there's a lot, a whole lot of little things that add up to big things, the way that I operate. And so I want to make uh, have the guardians pet their dog a little different, talk to it a little bit different, feed it a little bit different, walk it a little different. Every time you do these things, you don't even think about it, but cumulatively they add up and they really help the dog with its behavior. Anything else you want me to go over? Um, no, I, I think that's it. All right, one last little way to get a dog to come is I like to hold, I have a treat in my hand, but I'm gonna do this without a treat. And I hold my hand up like this, Willow. I start lowering it. The lower you go, the more it's for your dog. And I'm curling my fingers up so she can't see it. Then I arc over her head to get her to sit or lay down. Then I lower it, let her lick it off, and I pet her and say, come or down, whichever one. I would probably say come for there because come is harder than the down. Willow. Come here. Get it. Willow. Can we sit or down? This is Willow, and this is Willow's roadmap to success. Remember, Everything you do trains your dog. Always sometimes you mean it.